If you're heading down under, be sure to leave some room on your plate for a sweet treat named after a ballerina, as well as plenty of marsupial meat. From Men at Work to Crocodile Dundee, it's abundantly clear that Australians have an undying love for the salty yeast spread known as Vegemite. This umami-esque paste with a slightly bitter aftertaste is a breakfast classic that's often enjoyed with toast or crackers. Created in 1922 by chemist Dr. Cyril P. Callister, Vegemite got its name following a nationwide competition. And then it quickly became one of the country's most beloved condiments. For novices, the key to enjoying this thick jam is by starting with a small amount so as not to overpower your taste buds. You can also pair it with butter to balance the strong flavor. Or you can opt for coffee or tea, both of which complement the savoriness. The Tim Tam is one of Australia's most popular prepackaged treats. These chocolate-covered cookies, or biscuits as they're called down under, are packed with a creamy chocolate filling. It makes for the perfect combination of gooey creaminess and brittle cookie crunch, all wrapped up in a rich chocolate shell. Named after the horse that won the Kentucky Derby in 1958, Tim Tams were introduced in 1964 as Australia's version of a popular UK cookie known as the Penguin. They've since inspired a trend called the Tim Tam Slam, in which snackers nibble the diagonal corners off two ends and then use the resulting biscuit straw to slurp up a few sips of tea or coffee. As you drink, the hot liquid turns the cookie's chocolate filling into a delectable explosion of cocoa flavor. I want a packet of Tim Tams that never runs out. Here's another one for anyone with an insatiable sweet tooth. Lamingtons are the national cake of Australia. They combine multiple flavors into one singular sensation as light and fluffy squares of vanilla-flavored sponge cake are coated in a thick layer of chocolate icing and then rolled in crunchy, nutty shards of dried coconut. It's no wonder that this iconic dessert is adored by Australians of all ages. Well, except for one. In a truly ironic twist, the man that the cakes were created for and named after is said to have hated them. Lord Charles Lamington served as the governor of the Australian state of Queensland from 1896 to 1901. As one version of the story goes, his cooks accidentally dropped a piece of sponge cake they'd prepared into a bowl of chocolate icing. To cover the mistake, the chef rolled the now chocolate-coated cake in dried coconut, and the rest is history. Lamingtons are now so popular that they've inspired the creation of Lamington-flavored ice cream, donuts, and even beer. Beer's all that matters to me. Not all iconic Australian foods fall on the sweet side. Take the hearty and rustic meat pie, which consists of a savory pastry filled with chopped meat and gravy. The outer crust is a flaky butter pastry dough baked to golden perfection. Inside, you'll find finely chopped meat, usually beef or lamb, plus a thick gravy and sometimes vegetables. They're a bit like pot pies, except less juicy and meant to be eaten on the go. While meat pies are as popular in Australia today as hot dogs and hamburgers are in the US, the pies themselves are believed to have originated in Europe. They were brought to the country by British immigrants in the 19th century. They actually date all the way back to ancient Greece and Rome, when simple doughs made with flour and water were stuffed with meat and cooked under hot coals. Flash forward a few hundred years, and while ovens have now replaced fire pits, the meat pie itself remains relatively unchanged. And then we just scoffed them all afternoon. <laughs> The delicate, airy cakes known as pavlovas consist of a meringue-based outer shell and a creamy, slightly softer core. They're made even more delicious with the addition of hearty whipped cream and slices of fresh fruit such as kiwi, strawberries, and passion fruit. Bakers in Australia and New Zealand argue over whose shores the pavlova started on, but one thing everyone can agree with is that it was named after famed Russian ballerina Anna Pavlova, who toured both countries extensively in the 1920s. The name was an homage to both her lighter-than-air dance moves and billowing lace tutu, which food historians say resembled the creamy layers of meringue. While pavlovas may look fancy, they're easy enough for even a novice baker to master, as they require just a handful of basic ingredients. The crunchy treats known as Anzac biscuits are more than a hundred years old, with a storied history that begins on the battlefields of World War I. Made from a classic combination of rolled oats, flour, sugar, and golden syrup, they occupy the strange no-man's land between cookie and cracker. The first ever Anzac biscuits were baked around 1915 by a government military group known as the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, or Anzac for short. Originally nicknamed Soldier's Biscuits or Anzac Krispies, the earliest versions were served as a substitute for bread, for men who were going to war or already on the battlefield. When stockpiles of food were low, the biscuits were even sometimes crumpled up and used as a sort of breakfast porridge by battle-weary troops. 
When the war ended, production of Anzac biscuits continued, with the recipe improving to include previously rationed eggs and butter. Nowadays, production is still overseen by the Australian military, and while many people eat Anzac biscuits because they authentically enjoy their unique nutty flavor, others eat them out of tribute to the sacrifices made by soldiers during the war. Today, we still love them, and they're still easy to make. In the US, most fish eaters primarily stick to basics like salmon or tuna, but in the island nation of Australia, the seafood of choice for many is the barramundi. Popular for its mild buttery flavor, flaky texture, and ample levels of protein and omega-3 fatty acids, barramundi can be prepared and eaten in a number of different ways. Those options include grilled or barbecued with fresh herbs, pan-fried with breadcrumbs for a crispy coating, baked with fresh lemon, poached in a creamy broth, or even added to a flavorful curry. Many Australian chefs also serve barramundi raw. Many Australians prefer barramundi over other fish for another important reason, sustainability. It's one of the few species that can be raised easily in large-scale fish farms, making it just as good for the environment as it is for the plate. A monster capable of growing to more than 5 feet in length and over 100 pounds, the barramundi also has special importance to Australia's indigenous population. They believe that it was specially created by their mythical rainbow serpent, a powerful spirit that rules the region and created all within it. At Australian children's birthday parties, parents tend to serve a sugar-packed appetizer known as fairy bread. If you've never heard of it, you may be surprised to learn that you likely already have all the essential ingredients to make it in your kitchen. All you need is some bread, butter, and a carton of rainbow sprinkles. That's right, it's nothing more than white bread topped with butter and then doused with loads and loads of rainbow sprinkles. Although nobody knows for sure when fairy bread actually originated, Scottish writer Robert Louis Stevenson notably mentioned it in a 1885 poem. And by the 1920s and 30s, it had already become entrenched in Australian culture as a simple and affordable treat, loved by children and adults alike. If you want to make your own, traditional fairy bread starts with slices of basic white bread, though some prefer whole wheat or sourdough instead. For sprinkles, traditionalists use French nonpareils, the tiny round sprinkles that are sold in a variety of colors. So with fairy bread, you have to take the biggest bite possible. That's not true. Yeah, it is. Okay. You ready? Go. Yeah. <laughs> Golden Gate Time ice cream bars have been serving up smiles for generations, ever since they were first introduced to the country by the Streets Ice Cream Company in 1959. A premium frozen treat at an affordable price, these bars consist of a mixture of toffee and vanilla ice cream coated in chocolate and then dunked in chunks of honeycomb cookie crumble. By keeping prices low and the quality of the ingredients high, the company wanted to make an in-demand product that was accessible to the masses. And the strategy paid off. Golden Gay Time is now widely considered to be one of the most popular ice cream varieties on the continent. It instantly conjures feelings of summer, relaxation, and happiness. And that's exactly what the bar's creators set out to capture, as the slogan on a four-pack box declares, four delicious chances to have a gay time. The illegitimate love child of a Frito and a Cheeto, Cheezels are ring-shaped corn snacks that have been coated in a layer of cheese powder. Created by Smith's Snack Food Company in the 1970s as a way to use up excess corn reserves in the company's warehouses, Cheezels have been an Australian favorite ever since. True cheeseheads love the unique interplay of the artificial puff-like cheese flavoring combined with the savory crunch of the heart corn ring. And just like Cheetos, Cheezels are also known and celebrated for leaving that telltale orange residue on your fingers. Because of their fragile structure, Cheezels are generally sold in a distinctive cone-shaped cylindrical bag. This unique container helps to keep them from being crushed or smashed, and also makes them easier to carry around and share. And that's something that isn't changing anytime soon. In recent years, the Cheezel empire has only continued to expand. They now come in a variety of flavors like chicken, barbecue, and sweet chili. This snack is also a popular topping or ingredient for other classic comfort foods, including burgers, nachos, mac and cheese, and fried chicken. Without Cheezels, the party's over. The Chico Roll is basically the Aussie version of a traditional Asian spring roll. It's bigger and has a thicker, crispier fried shell, and it also packs about twice the amount of filling. But flavor-wise, the two are incredibly similar. Both contain a mixture of meat and cabbage, carrot, celery, and onion. Chico Rolls also contain added barley and beef tallow or fat to add hardiness and heft, as well as helping to ensure that the roll is extra crispy when it emerges from the deep fryer. As the story goes, the Chico Roll was created by Australian entrepreneur Frank 
Frank McEnroe in the 1950s. He wanted to capture the flavor and texture of the spring roll while also making something bigger and more fulfilling that could be eaten and enjoyed with one hand at rugby, cricket, and soccer matches. The other hand, of course, was reserved for a cold beer. Originally dubbed a chicken roll, McEnroe decided to change the name to Chico to make it sound more exotic. Chico rolls then quickly exploded in popularity and were even one of the most widely enjoyed snacks at the 1956 Olympic Games in Melbourne. No culinary visit through Australia would be complete without hopping along to one final Aussie treat, kangaroo. Although this uniquely down-under delicacy has been a part of the indigenous Australian diet for thousands of years, it gradually gained acceptance for other populations with the arrival of European settlers in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Flash forward to today when kangaroos are widely consumed for their unusual flavor. It's slightly gamey with a hint of nutty sweetness. It's also lean and tender and notably sustainable. Many environmentalists appreciate that kangaroo meat requires less feed, water, and land than other forms of livestock. These marsupials also live freely in the wild and are not farmed, making them a generally ethical and humane meat option. If you want to try some, consider ordering kangaroo steak. Much like steak from a cow, it's typically marinated with herbs and spices and then pan-fried or cooked over the grill. There are also kangaroo burgers, which are served either plain or topped with the usuals like cheese, bacon, lettuce, and tomato. For a bit more exotic taste, you can try barbecued kangaroo sausages, kangaroo bolognese, kangaroo kebabs, or even a big bowl of kangaroo stir-fry.